Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to another three tip bit. Today I am so excited to introduce my great friend, Nicole Khalil. Nicole, you know the drill. I'm gonna pass this right over to you. Please share with us who you are, what you do, and who you do it for. Yeah, so that's kind of a loaded question that I'm not even 100% sure how to answer. I am a coach, a consultant, a mom, a partner, a new business, Business owner, a serial entrepreneur, a uh, daughter. I mean, like, I don't know. And, and, and I, I was doing a lot of work in coaching and consulting um, for a lot of people in the financial services industry. That's sort of my background. Um, at the end of last year, I launched a new business called Woman's Work and really propelled my work more towards um, working with women in any industry and helping them to achieve their goals and, and chase their dreams. And ultimately together, all of us redefining what it actually looks like and what it means to be doing women's work. Um, and then my big mission is to eliminate gender expectations altogether. And now I know I, it's not likely to happen in my lifetime, but I'm gonna do whatever it takes so that we can all live our best uh, lives and our authentic selves and, and chase our purposes, regardless of what you know society thinks we should or shouldn't be doing based on our gender. So that was a long-winded answer. I love it, <laughs> I love it. Well, here's the thing, like we're all about transparency, right? And just being real. And so um, you are definitely chipping away at that, um, at that vision that you've cast out. So I, I know it's exciting to be um, along for the ride as, as a friend of yours. Um, so with your just really deep knowledge and experience and different industries and so many different types of clients and with the work you're doing now, um, I've only asked you to bring three tips to the table um, with just the current climate that we're in. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and let you lead off. What are those three tips you came to share with us today? Yeah, so when you asked me to do this, my mind went a little haywire, and I thought of the fact that most of us are sitting at home, and so it's a really good opportunity for all of us to be doing some internal work, and I didn't want anything to be gender specific. So my, my three things are confidence building, the recovery plan, and um, my take on time management. So as it relates to confidence building, um, I read every article, every book, everything I could possibly get my hands on as it relates to confidence. And I think this is just a really good time for us to be in reflection. And, and like I said, doing some of those internal, um, you know, self-development type things. And so confidence building came into my mind as our, our first biggest opportunity. Because here's what I know to be true about confidence. It is always built from the inside out. Always. And I think a lot of misconceptions around confidence, um, maybe in this part a little bit more, especially with women, about us looking a certain way can help you know, trigger our confidence or increase our confidence. And what a unique time that we live in right now uh, that you know, how we look is becoming less and less important. We're all gonna know everybody's true hair colors pretty soon here, right? And my lashes are falling off probably as we speak. Um, and so it's you know, a unique time where we can really let go of some of the perceptions of others, what we look like, how we present ourselves in any given moment, and really be thinking more um, purposefully, more strategically about who we want to be and where we can find and build our confidence. So a tip here um, is uh, starting with a list of what I know to be true about me at this point in my life. Um, I do a whole podcast episode on this, but I, I think it's um, a really important time to really get to know yourself. And it can be so confidence building. I define confidence as this. When you know who you are, when you own who you're not, and when you choose to embrace all of it. And so this activity will help you very much with the first part, knowing who you are. So things I know to be true about me at this point in my life, and then just write down whatever comes to your mind. And if you're unsure, this can be a good conversation with your spouse or partner, or people in your household or good friends. like. Hey, if you had to describe my strengths in, in three to five words, what would they be? Or what do you really count on for me? Or what do I do better than most? Asking those questions and beginning to build your list, I think this is going to be a good thing for us to internalize um, during this time 
and, and begin to build that list. Some of us might need to be making career choices right now. Some of us might be having career choices made for us. Um, you know, some of us might be facing some sort of changes and certainly we're all social distancing. So this is a really good opportunity to get to know our best selves. So my tip number one is, is working on this list of what I know to be true about me at this point in my life. And, and that last part is important because we evolve and we grow and we change. And what I know to be true about me at this point in my life is different. Some things are the same. Like I love my family. That's on my list no matter what age I am. But my list has evolved from even five years ago or eight years ago when I started doing this. So hopefully that helps some of you. Um, my second tip is also aligned with confidence building. I think one of the things that chips away at our own confidence is what I call head trash. It's the stuff we say in our own heads that's very rarely true and almost never kind, right? Like the things I say to myself in my own head, I would never say to you, Lindsay, or anybody I care about or love, my sister, my daughter, my friends, my husband. I just I would never communicate with somebody I love in that way. So why do we do it to ourselves? And so what I find is head trash really kicks in the most when uh, things go, don't go the way we want, when we get a rejection or a no or have a tough day or somebody's a jerk to us, um, head trash goes haywire. And what it does is it takes us out of action, right? So we sort of go internal, we start getting fearful, we start judging ourselves and others and comparison, all the crap that happens. And what it ultimately does that's the most detrimental is it takes us out of action. Action builds confidence, action moves us forward, even mistakes moves us forward if we, if we choose it. And so what I uh, have developed with a lot of my coaching clients and am now passing forward is this concept of a recovery plan. Writing out, in this case, you know, start small, maybe it's five things that give you energy, remind you what's important, motivate you, refocus you. So I'll give you a few examples that are on my recovery plan. Um, one of them is uh, reading quotes on tenacity. So if I'm having a tough day, like I'll literally just Google tenacity and start reading quotes until I feel like doing something tenacious. Um, another thing is I read items in my feel good folder. Anytime somebody sends me a compliment or says I did a good job or something that I said impacts them, I, I, I have a physical one, you can do it on your desktop, but I print it, I put it in my feel good folder. When I'm having a crappy day, I'll open it up and start reading about how awesome I am and the difference that I make and how I impact people and I get all fired up. Um, another example is like a music playlist. Uh, I have on Spotify, if you wanna look at it, if Confidence Were a Song is one of my playlists, but I have a handful of others where it's just like stuff that fires me up and, and makes me feel motivated. Um, the list is endless. Phone a friend, uh, you know, create a Pinterest motivation board, uh, read a self-development book, read your vision, write three things you're grateful for. Um, the point is uh, that we're trying to catch these moments where we go internal and we're feeling the head trash kick in. We're trying to catch these moments so that we get back into action faster than we would if left to our own devices. Um, so, uh, if you want, and I'll say this later on my website, um, there is more information about recovery plan and, and building your own. But uh, I mean, I don't know about you all, but I feel like I'm having to recover in some cases minute by minute or hour by hour in the current environment, being home with my um, husband and my six-year-old daughter. Woo, we are all recovering uh, really, <laughs> really quickly and all, not always in the most productive way. So I'm really trying to catch myself. My recovery plan is being used constantly. Okay, my third tip is my take on um, time management. Uh, again, current environment, we're all thinking about time a little bit differently and, and, and what, did you, what to do with it and what's the most productive use of our time. We're all sort of living a new normal. 
And um, somebody taught me this many years ago, one of my coaches, and, and the concept is it's not actually time that we're managing. And this shift in understanding what it is that we're actually managing can be a complete game changer. Nobody's managing time because time is neutral. We all have the same amount of it. We all have 60 minutes an hour. Uh, we all have 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Um, you know, somebody out there has a time machine, call me because I'm interested. But at the end of the day, you know, we're not managing time. It's all the same. Nobody can manage an extra five minutes in their hour or an extra, you know, 25th hour in their day. What we're managing is the choices that we make with the time that we have. And just in my own brain, calling it choice management instead of time management has made all of the difference. Because I think sometimes we all are guilty of this, myself included, we feel like somebody else is controlling our time or that we don't have choices. And it's just a good reminder in any given moment or in any given hour that it's choice management that we're all doing. Now, sometimes it doesn't feel like we have a choice. I don't feel like I have a choice um, that my kid can't go to school, right? Um, but I do have a choice. I have a choice in how I respond and react to that. I have a choice in what we're going to do with our time and what we're not going to do with our time. For example, I am not homeschooling JJ. We are very focused on her reading and you know doing things that help her brain and she has workbooks. But we tried sort of this mommy being teacher thing and daddy being teacher thing and it is not working in our household. Um, it's not, it creates more stress for all of us. Um, and, and so, you know, that was something where it's like, okay, choice management, not time management. Um, and we're focused on what are the best and right choices for us given the situation, but we still have a choice. I love that. Um, Sorry. So, those are my tips. No, that's great. So many great examples. I, I love how, um, you know, in preparation, you gave me the three bullet points, but you've given us countless examples, right, to kind of expand on that. So this idea of confidence building. Um, I love the fill in the blank, um, you know, exercise that you gave us to do. The idea of a recovery plan. I have never thought of that. Um, I love your feel good folder. Uh, I've got little bits and pieces of, pieces of that throughout, scattered throughout physically in person and then digitally, I need to put it all in one place. So I love that idea. And my favorite, which I requested, so thank you for that, is choice management. Um, just makes perfect sense. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. What are the th ways that um, our listeners can find you and engage with you and connect with you? Yeah, so um, my website is probably the easiest. It's Nicole Khalil, N-I-C-O-L-E-K-A-L-I-L.com. Um, you can find everything there, or you can follow me on most, especially Instagram. I'm really, Lindsay's laughing right now because she knows this. We're trying to build our Instagram following because we are so late to that social media platform. Um, so Nicole M. Khalil, you can find me there. And uh, my podcast is called This Is Woman's Work. Okay. Uh, I was going to make sure you didn't leave that one out. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we're on all the platforms. And there are two um, that I do on confidence building that go way more into detail on confidence and the recovery plan. Awesome. So we've got website, Instagram, and podcast. So good. And you know that we're going to end on a high note, uh, even though this has been high the whole time. Uh, what's one thing, if you could choose one thing to share with us that makes you happy? So I love to read. Um, I hate to say it, but like I win at social distancing because I am a natural introvert. And so like I am kind of thriving right now, but I love to read. And, and so, um, you know, it just, even novels, like I don't always read business related books or self-development books. In fact, most of the time I don't, I think I like read every fourth book, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes me a better human. It calms me down. It gives me new perspectives, different ways of seeing things. I just think it makes me better and it recharges my battery. So um, there are lots of things that make me happy, but th that's a, a consistent and, and big one. 
So good. Maybe when we uh, post this online, you could share with us some of the books that you've read this year already, because I know you've got a pretty audacious goal of that number, but we'll leave that a secret and let others find you online so they can uh, connect with you. Nicole, thank you so much for carving out time to share with our listeners your three tips. Uh, always helpful, always actionable. And thank you for listening and tuning in to another three tip bit. See you on the next conversation.